G'day, this is Simon and James at South OC Cars and Coffee. Great weather, great turnout. Some really cool cars. What are you seeing this morning, James? So we have the F40 back here again this weekend. We do also have a massive club of R8s behind us and then just a bunch of other really cool, classy exotics as well. It's a pretty good, uh, well well diverse morning here this morning despite the weather. Abs what have you seen? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, classic uh, Land Rover Defender. There's an old Land Cruiser FJ40 or 45. Some really good stuff. Uh, don't forget, if you're coming to South OC Cars and Coffee, please respect our rules. No spinning, no revving, no burnouts. That includes on the streets of San Clemente and getting on and off the freeway. All right, mate, let's go for a walk and check some stuff out. Let's do it. Here we have the Cayman lineup this morning in Exotics Row. We have uh, the Shark Blue Cayman and then the two 718 Spiders. Pretty much convertible GT4s, these cars are fantastic. I love the front ends on them. And then, gotta love the color. This Shark Blue is absolutely stunning. This F40 is back again. This is a longtime supporter of the show. We absolutely love this car here. Beautiful red interior, red exterior, silver wheels. This car is properly driven and properly enjoyed. Here we have the Bugatti Chiron Pure Sport owned by none other than Hyper NFT IO himself. The Pure Sport is a crazy edition of the Chiron. You can see it has beautiful tinted carbon. It is actually full exposed carbon. Beautiful wheels, massive carbon ceramics, and of course the W16 that we've all come to know and love. See the sleek arrow on this, this massive split wing on the end. What a crazy hypercar. Here we have a super clean Ferrari F430, but what I'm more interested in is this 488 piece that absolutely stunning on BBS LMs. Gorgeous dark gray with this uh, two-tone stripe down the middle. Absolutely stunning. Here we have a brand new Lamborghini Huracan STO with a rare option. Has these beautiful magnesium wheels. The bronze on black is just absolutely stunning. Just needs that VF supercharger. And then so does Skinny as well. Here he has his beautiful Audi R8. Bunch of 1016 carbon on it. And the only thing it's lacking is that supercharger. Here we have a beautiful 458 with a full wide body on it, built by RDBLA. You can see these beautiful rose gold rims, gorgeous uh, paint on it, and then this Capristo rear hatch, one of my favorite features on the car. Normally with the Spider, you can't actually see the engine, but with this Capristo rear hatch, there is glass, so you can see the engine underneath. All in all, such a cool, unique build. It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend of me. It's not working out, maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to break up so I can make a better me. Better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold shape, find almost anything. All it takes is some time and some clarity to find your identity. It's mind over everything. Defender here. Isn't this colour great? It just suits it. and then there's all this nice metalwork on the front, this front bull bar, the cage over the top. But look how beautiful the interior is. Notice right hand drive as well, so somebody's obviously imported this as well. Very, very nice looking vehicle. Bullet door handles, look at the way this has all been done. Very, very cool. Pretty amazing looking super here. Have a look at this thing. The coil packs across the top, catch can over here with breathers on the side of it. Really, really impressive. Waste go down here, throttle body in here. This is a lot of work going on to this thing. Have a look at the timing build as well. This is very, very nice. Mishimoto radiator there. Very, very neat. And a great big snail sitting over there, of course. One of the greatest motors of all time. When I feel like this, I'm a The 
there are a crowd of people standing around this particular car and nobody really knows what it is. Well, we can look at the badge. It's uh, Faisal Vega from Paris. Um, we're just guessing that it's probably a car that's running something like Chevy or perhaps early Ford running gear, like things like the Gears did at the time, so a coach builder's car. But it is absolutely beautiful. You can tell that all these panels are just like handcrafted as you look along them, all the doors and everything. And the interior itself, you look at that wood dash with the gauges in there of that era and then that hand sculpted uh, console. This is obviously built by a coach builder, one of those sort of limited production cars, but very, very interesting. Like, look at this, look at the logo inside the tail lights. This is incredibly interesting. Uh, HK500, it says. So, uh, very interesting car. If we can find the owners, I think this is very worthy of a car of the week uh, car because it's just so unusual. It's nothing like I've ever seen before. Like you're so obsessed with me, with me. 1973 FJ40 Land Cruiser. How do I know it's an FJ40? Is it the lights on the front? Is it well, you could tell, but the gentleman over here just told me that's how I know. Uh, I do love these because, as I've mentioned before, I learned to drive in one of these. In fact, it was the uh, first vehicle that, dare I say, broke the speed limit on a public road when I was about 12 years old in one of these. Mind you, it was a country road in the middle of nowhere. But I really, really love these old Land Cruisers. They are so um, utilitarian. Um, little things like the clever things they did. Notice that the glove compartment is exactly the same shape as the gauge cluster, uh, make it really easy to make them either left or right hand drive. Ac really access to things, window wind and the door lock in through those uh, panels there. And the one big killer of Land Cruisers, see this vent here. So you would kick that vent open on a hot day and it would open out forwards and you'd get a breeze into the car. The only problem was if there was dust and dirt on the floor, you had to be ready and close your eyes and because and, uh, you're going to get a face full of dust. The gentleman who owns it's just opening the hood or as uh, I would say the bonnet. Let's have a look under there. There is that original straight six, inline six that they used in these lengths. 3.9 litre, ton of torque, not a, not a ton of horsepower, but they were a, a really great capable off-roader, particularly when you put these things into low four and then turned in the locking hubs, which got fitted to them afterwards, typically. Um, the original ones had a three-speed on the floor. They then went to a four-speed on the floor. Still didn't have an overdrive, but then they, there were companies that actually came out with an overdrive later that you could fit to the vehicle. Very, very cool. Thank you for bringing it out, sir. Very nice. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody. Got to get a shot at this. Have a look at this. Covered in money. And signatures. Have a look at that. They are all dollar bills. I wonder why they didn't cover it in uh, hundreds. Seems a little cheap of them. I was going to say, show me the money. So. Oh, only one question. How come you didn't cover it in 100s? You no, know, we're working on that. Yeah, you're a little cheap for me. You're a little cheap. Wait, wait, wait. Open the, okay, open the front real quick. Oh, I got it. Here we go. We're going to open the front. I'm glad he kept the Porsche. <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> it's definitely I, I want you to know that it took every ounce of energy not to reach my hand in there and steal that. There you go. You saw it first, James. We're going to shut you in there and any you can fit in your pockets, you can keep. Crazy, huh? <laughs> so, I love that you've done that. That's very cool. You, very, very cool. Awesome. I want to see it next time with all the hundreds in there. Is everybody in the world by? Please, Lord, give me a sign. A sign. Yo, there's no mercy in this world. Just hunger, thirsty persons. In different versions. Each new update, that shit worsens. Why? Pull back. The curtain and you'll see the different vermin. Look at this, not one, but two of these tiny little masters with these gold wings on them. How cool is that? They are so small. I wish you could get the perspective of how tiny they are. We can see how much gap there is either side of the uh, either side. Yeah, there, there's an idea of how small they are. The gentleman that just got out of it was just this must be like a TARDIS in there. It's absolutely full of room and yet very, very tiny. You'd want to really like the person in your passenger seat, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, really great. Uh, what sort of motor do they have in them? It's an inline three 
660 cc turbo. So effectively it's almost like a motorcycle size engine, isn't it? Basically. It's crazy. And it's mid-engined, yeah? Let's have a look at this. Okay, so there's the, the starter motor. Where's the motor? Oh, hang on. There, there. Look at that. And the whole, the whole thing is, let's remember that it's all about power to weight ratio. This thing's tiny. It doesn't matter it's a three-cylinder. Uh, the fact it's also turbo with something that probably weighs virtually nothing. 1,600, just under. Yeah, it'll be a fun little car to drive, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. I love that these cars exist. I love that people like you take an interest in them and keep them on the road. So this is always one of my favourite cars at the show, this amazing, amazing Roadrunner Superbird, being a previous Car of the Week winner. Uh, and if you've seen the new TV commercial for Maguire's featuring James and myself, this is the car that I'm actually pointing at and nodding to, getting back in the park. I absolutely love this car, it is so cool. Uh, little details that a lot of people don't know, for example, see this, you can actually adjust the camber on the uh, rear wing so you can actually change the amount of downforce. And the race versions, these are actually connected to a cable inside the car, so if it came loose, it wasn't flying off and hitting the driver coming in the other direction. The course got banned uh, by NASCAR because the aero made it so much quicker than everything else. It's, uh, it was really killing the competitors, but what a great car. It's never really permanent, but damn it hurts, man I could feel all of the turbulence and it's concerning I've been searching for a purpose, I hope it's worth it This society is really trying me Ain't no hide and seek, I hide to be far from anxiety I need my space, I need my privacy I need some silence, please, you're all too loud You don't speak quietly Oldsmobile Toronado, uh, interesting car not, not something you see very often um, interesting lines but one of the things you'll notice is there is no transmission hump in these things that's because they are in fact front wheel drive i was very fortunate sarah and i to actually get a tour of jay leno's garage jay has got one of these and it has a transplant out of i believe a z06 corvette so rear wheel drive obviously and and uh a 427 but what a cool car to do that sort of thing and i'm sure it was a huge job when you think about it if this thing was not designed to hold a cradle for a rear diff and transmission and everything, it would have been a ton of engineering, but hey, if anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be Jay Leno. So always good to see interesting cars at the show. I found a place with the view, the pain is never gonna stop. If it's controlling you, I know the top can it all. If they were both the same colour, I think I was seeing double. This is two, not one, two Jowett Jupiters. Regulars at the show, we, we see them here all the time, along to one of the gentlemen at the back. Good to see you guys two of them in the family and these aren't the only two that you've had either are they well my uh my dad owned one right and then my older brother owned two of them and uh he was killed in an automobile accident he had 50 cars wow and they all had to be sold right and this car sold went to sacramento and it was a basket case i mean it, right and then that guy set it in his backyard for 20 years. Wow. Weeds growing up through it. And uh, and then a guy from Canada bought it. And he retired and spent six years working eight hours a day restoring it. Wow. That's a good retirement job. Oh, you wouldn't believe what and, it looked like. And correct me if I'm wrong, because we've talked about it before. When you found this, you didn't know it was your brother's car no, at first. no idea. And then you buy it, and then all of a sudden... During the... At the highway patrol because it was out of the country right they had to do a, a homeland security check and the guy had a list of all of them oh stories. how special is that yeah. I, I, I could feel the blood creeping up from the heathens got will got fight got pride got reason if they want to go eat then you know i'm gonna feed them if you're coming for me hope you're ready for a demon i got eyes in the back in my head I'm seeing take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving I could take this crap from seeing to believing got a taste for blood and my tongue keeps bleeding from the words I spit so sharp so freezing so cold behold frostbite they feeling I could tear you apart or I could go heal them don't believe in fate don't believe in ceilings I just need a taste in my mind starts pretty amazing little car sitting over in the back lot this is a Renault turbo too it is a mid-engine car look at the wide body kit on this engine is in this carver over in here you know back in the days 
When this was built, motorsport was very different from the way it is now. Manufacturers would build cars based on street cars that they could then take to the track. And this was one of those cars that could be road registered and yet had the DNA of a rally car. Today, of course, very different. If you look at a rally car, it is, well, the only thing that's really similar to anything from the factories, it kind of resembles the looks. This, of course, is the days when you buy it, you kind of race it. And honestly, I prefer these days. Same applies to me, at least for NASCAR as well. And in Australia, the V8 supercars, well, that used to be street registered cars when I was a kid. So great to see these classics. So I'm wandering past the last row and I see this Volkswagen bus and I first thing that stood out to me on the other side were the steel wheels and then I noticed the inside was open and lo and behold that is an LS transplant in this thing. Have a look at the suspension and everything they've done in the back. Absolutely incredible. This would be noisy too. So check this out. So there's your throttle body. Look where the air intake is. It's sucking air right next to between, <laughs> between the driver and the passenger. It's got some tough looking seats in it as well. Tough looking shifter. This thing is super cool. 4L60E uh, turb, um, transmission and automatic transmission. Ha, huh. somebody's having some fun with this. That is it for another weekend here at South OC Cars and Coffee. A fantastic Memorial Day weekend here at the show. I want to say a huge thank you to all the sponsors. We have the Bracketeer Way Marketing, Meguiar's, Polestar, PDM Brands, Next Level Auto Protection, Vegetine Law, Happy Jewelers, Carbontastic, Mazda USA, and then Polaris Slingshot as well. Please remember, if you are coming to South OC Cars and Coffee, respect our rules, no revving, no speeding, and no burnouts. That does include getting on and off the freeways and also driving through the city of San Clemente. I want to say a huge shout out, shout out to all the volunteers for helping us out each and every week. Could not put this show on without them. If you want to become a volunteer, hit us up on Instagram at South OC Cars and Coffee Merch. While you're over there, check out some of the brand new merchandise we have over there. That uh, Instagram is the one that we handle all the volunteer rostering for. Uh, if you do want to volunteer at the show, you get to bring your car in before 8.30 and then Ruby's Diner does also provide a free coffee and donut for everyone helping us out. Yeah, big thank you to Ruby's for doing that and also for feeding the masters. We really appreciate those guys. And of course, the outlets to San Clemente for allowing us to be here. We couldn't do it without them. So please remember, if you have any shopping to do, come to the outlets, tell them South OC Cars and Coffee sent you. That is it. Don't forget to like, follow and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you back here next week for another South OC Cars and Coffee. Thank you, guys.